Hey guys, what's up? Today, I'm going to be introducing polar coordinates, and we're going to start off with an example. And that example is hard to do if we don't use polar coordinates. So I'm going to try to motivate polar coordinates through doing an example that's really tough. So this example says, find the volume that's under the cone, but above the left half of the unit circle. So if we look at this region of integration, the left half of the unit circle is right here. So the cone is somewhere up here in the z direction, but the xy direction, we're only integrating over the left half of this unit circle. So this unit circle goes all the way up to y equals 1 and goes all the way down to y equals negative 1 and over to x equals negative 1. So we could we could do this two ways. We could describe this circle with type 1 or type 2 bounds. So the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 1, because it's a unit circle. So x squared plus y squared equals 1. Type 1 bounds would have us describe the region as y goes from bottom to top. So bottom function of x to top function of x. If we solve this thing right here for y, we could get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so that would be our bounds for y. Our x bounds would be from x from negative 1 to 0. So for what x values does y go from the bottom half of the circle to the top half of the circle? Well, that's happening for x values between negative 1 and 0. So this would have us say y is from negative square root 1 minus x squared to positive square root 1 minus x squared. And x all the while is from negative 1 to 0. So that's type 1 bounds for this region of integration. Type 2 bounds are actually a little bit easier, in my opinion. So type 2 would say, okay, take x from left to right. Well, if we solve this instead of solving it for y, we could go back up here and solve it for x. We could say x is equal to plus or minus square root 1 minus y squared. Now, which one is it? Is it the positive or is it the negative square root? Well, is x positive or is x negative over here? Well, x is negative. That means we'd want to take the negative square root. So the type 2 bounds, x would go from negative square root 1 minus y squared up to where does x stop? x stops at this vertical line, which is just x equals 0. So that's the upper bound for x. So from left to right, that's our bounds. Now, y goes from negative 1 to 1. So x does this left to right thing for all y values between negative 1 and 1. All right, so now um, you can pick either one. I don't really like either one, but we'll go with the second one. So we'll set the double integral up using the second type of bounds. So the volume would be the integral from negative 1 to 1 integral negative square root 1 minus x squared to 0. Now the integrand is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Oh, geez, man, this is not good. So dx, dy. And I see that I've made a typo down here. This should be a y squared. All right, so, man, that integral is tough because I integrate x. I have x squared plus a constant, basically, because we treat the y like it's a constant. That's a trig sub. x equals y tan theta. Man, that's not good. So that's a tough integral. So this is really tough. <laughs> it's not that it can't be done. It can be done. It's just not looking good. It's going to be kind of complicated. So that's our motivation for using polar coordinates. So how do we use polar coordinates to do this integral instead of using Cartesian coordinates? Well, we'll come back to this example after we get through polar coordinates. 
All right, so what about these polar coordinates is so good? Well, first of all, we got to figure out what does it mean to do a double integral in polar coordinates. In Cartesian coordinates, we had the coordinates that look like this, and we got our delta A by saying delta X times delta Y. But in polar coordinates, we don't have this rectangular setup that we do when we have Cartesian coordinates. We have concentric circles, and we have these radial lines going out from the origin. So our delta A's are quite a bit different. So this delta A is like a curved area. So here the delta A is a little bit harder to figure out. So let's see what this delta A is going to be. So here's the origin, 0. Here's the radius, r. This little change here is delta r. And this angle change, we'll call that delta theta. What is this area? So I need to know this area. So what is delta A? This length is approximately this length if delta r is small. If delta r is small, this first curved length is approximately this curved length here. So the delta A is going to be length times width. And the width here is delta R. Okay, that's our width. Our length L is a little bit harder to figure out. So L is a curved distance, or actually an arc length. So L is an arc length, and we know arc length is radius times angle. Well here, the radius R times the angle delta theta is going to be R times delta theta. So this L is approximately the same as this length, and I could figure out this length by knowing arc length, and arc length is just angle times radius. So then delta A is going to be R delta R delta theta. So that's actually what we would stick in our Riemann sum. And if we take the limit of the Riemann sum, so in the limit of the Riemann sum, this dA is going to become R dR d theta. All right, so now what you got to do is describe your region with polar coordinates, then change your dA to be R dR d theta, and then you can just integrate. So that's our goal, and we will do that with the previous example. So let's go back to the previous example. All right, so we're back, and we've got our previous example, and we're going to use polar coordinate bounds to describe this region. So for polar coordinates, this angle theta goes from pi over 2 down to 3 pi over 2. So theta is going from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. R, we know that this is 1, this is negative 1, negative 1. R is going from 0 to 1. R goes radially out from the origin. So R is going from 0 to 1. Now our integrand Z is just going to be square root of R squared. So whenever we switch to polar coordinates, we need to remember that X is equal to R cosine theta, Y is equal to R sine theta. Therefore, X squared plus y squared equals r squared. So changing this integrand, we just change it z equals r. And now our integrand is just r. So now the volume maybe becomes a little bit simpler. We'll put the bounds for theta out here. So pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. Integral 0 to 1 for r. Our integrand is z square root of x squared plus y squared, so that's r dA, which is r dr d theta. So don't forget that this is dA right here. 
So this whole thing right here is our dA. Just like for Cartesian coordinates, we just had dx, dy. For polar coordinates, we always have this r dr d theta term. Now, integrating this shouldn't be too hard. We can do the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 d theta times integral from 0 to 1 r squared dr. Now, what is this integral? So the first integral turns out to be theta from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 times second integral be r cubed over 3 from 0 to 1. Multiply those two together. This can be 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 2, which is just pi. The second one is going to be 1 cubed minus 0 cubed, which is just 1 third. So the answer here is just pi over 3. So that's the volume under the cone above the left half of the unit circle. Now you might ask yourself, does it matter that we use the left half of the unit circle here? Well, only because that's what the problem told us to do. But actually, if you think about this problem, you have a cone. So if you have a cone, it's actually symmetric in the 3D space. So it wouldn't matter like which part of the circle you found the volume of as long as you use half of it, you'll get pi over 3. So if that's half the, vo or half the volume under the cone above the circle, what's the whole volume over the circle of radius 1? Well, then it would just be 2 times that. So 2 pi over 3 would be the whole volume under the cone above the unit circle in the xy plane. So that's an example, and that's how we do polar coordinates. We always switch anything in the integrand to polar coordinates using x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And then we change our bounds to be polar coordinate bounds. So you think about theta, what angles is theta going through? Where is the radius going? It's always going out from the origin. In this case, for a circle, it goes out to a constant value. We'll see examples in different sections. Um, the radius doesn't go to a constant. And then you always have to remember dA for polar coordinates is r dr d theta. Thanks for watching.